Hey y'all, happy new year. It is officially January, 2024. I cannot believe that. I hope you guys had a Merry Christmas or if you don't celebrate Christmas, I hope you had a good whatever you celebrate or just a good end of December. At the beginning of 2023, I think it was my very first video on here, minus like my intro video. I did a everything I read in 2022 video, but since I've been doing reading wrap ups, for every month. I decided this year that I would just do like my most favorite reads from 2023. I think in total I read 41 books. I should check and see how many I read last year, see if I've read more. Okay you guys, that is everything I read in 2022. 34 books I think. I wanna say it was probably less because this year was just so crazy all around. It was 34, so I read almost 10 more. What is that, like seven? Seven more books than last year. Which, hey, like I said, this year was insane, so I'm impressed it wasn't less. Also, I'm gonna have to really think hard about these books because it's been so long. I feel like this year, like, this for the first books on this list, I can't believe it because I feel like I read these ages ago. But it was A Court of Thorns and Roses by Sarah J. Moss. Probably more specifically the second and the third book. So A Court of Mist and Fury and A Court of Wings and Ruin. But I do feel like I have to include the first one because it's, I mean, the reason I got into the series. If you don't know, these are fantasy books. Super overhyped, which I think is justified. Cannot wait for the next one to come out. Anyway, I'm gonna read the first, just like last year, I'm gonna read the first sentence in the book because sometimes, sometimes you hear a really good first sentence and you're like, ah, oh, I have to get that book. So, Court of Thorns and Roses. The forest had become a labyrinth of snow and ice. That's it, that's a super short one. A Court of Mist and Fury. Maybe I'd always been broken and dark inside. I actually kind of like that one. I think that one's good. And then A Court of Wings and Ruin. Okay, this is Resand two years before the wall. The buzzing flies and screaming survivors had long since replaced the beating war drums. Holy cow, that's like a heavy line to start a book off on. And you guys, if you're gonna read anything out of what I suggest, I, the series is just too good to pass up. The next one is Book Lovers by Emily Henry. This is like a super easy rom-com type read. I loved it, it was so cute. In my notes, I said that I laughed for most of it and cried for some parts of it, and I would recommend it to anyone who wants a sunshine book. So take that for what you will. So the first line in this one is, when books are your life, or in my case, your job, you get pretty good at guessing where a story Story is going. I want to reread this book now. Okay, I've got The Simple Wild from K.A. Tucker. This is actually a series or maybe it's just two, two books. I can't remember. I haven't actually read the second one. I really need to. This is like a contemporary contemporary fiction book. I loved the story in this. This one was a tearjerker, just warning you. Or I don't know, maybe it wasn't that sad. I just am really emotional all the time. But this was a good one about finding love and like fixing and healing relationships with family. Ugh. Okay, Ren sets the two navy suitcases next to the stroller and then reaches for the cigarette precariously perched between his lips, taking a long, slow drag. I really need to get the second book in this series because honestly, this one was so good. Love in the Time of Serial Killers by Alicia Thompson. This was another really super easy read. It's like a romance novel. I would suggest this for any like true crime junkies, but like only if you like romance, probably I would say. This one is like a grumpy sunshine, slow burn, boy next door, and there's a lot of lots of like pop culture references in it, which was a lot of fun. I also said that it was a little spicy. I don't remember so much of that. Maybe like a little, a little spice. But just like book lovers, this was another super fun, easy read. Obviously a 200 pound Victorian writing desk wasn't made to be moved all by yourself. The last thing he told me by Laura Dave. I've got lots of like just small, easy reads for you guys if you ever like just need a book to pick up but don't want something super heavy. The last like four are really good for that. This one is a mystery novel. They also made it into a TV show on Apple TV, which was with Jennifer Gardner and um, the guy from Game of Thrones. Anyway, loved the book. 
loved the show. I thought they did a great job with it. Owen used to like to tease me about how I lose everything, about how in my own way I have raised losing things to an art form. I will say though, no spoilers, but the ending killed me just a little bit. The Last to Vanish by Megan Miranda. This is another mystery thriller type book. This one had so many twists and turns. I remember that, like thinking I had it figured out and then realizing that I was wrong, which is a lot of fun. I like that when it's not like too predictable. He arrived at night in the middle of a downpour, the type of conditions more suitable for a disappearance. That's such a good start to this book. I feel like it's so spooky. Just to keep on the theme of spooky thriller reads, this is a psych psychological thriller from Lisa Unger. It's The Stranger Inside. I remember reading this and thinking it, it, it reminded me of Firefly Lane by Kristen Hanna. I haven't actually read the book, but I watched the show. It reminds me of Firefly Lane if it was like dark on the dark side of things. This one I had just grabbed at the grocery store as I was walking by. I was like, oh, that looks good. And I loved it. I wait because I have nothing but time. This next one is a duology. It's Daughter of the Moon Goddess and Heart of the Sun Warrior by Su Lin Tan. I loved these books. I thought they were so good. They were ones that made me cry. Also had quite the twists to them. They are fiction books based off of Chinese mythology and like just such, such beautiful stories. I know I said if you read anything from this video to pick Akatar, but honestly, like you do not want to miss out on these books. There are many legends about my mother. That one is super short and gives absolutely nothing away. <laughs> Night cloaked the sky in darkness, draping shadows across the earth. Seriously, such good books, guys. The next one I pulled out was Hidden Pictures by Jason Reculik. You guys, thriller mystery book. It's clear that I love these. This one I could not put down though. And I think my husband and I had a red eye flight and we were stuck on the airplane for longer than we were supposed to be. And I just couldn't stop reading this. So I, I was okay with it. It was so good, except for it does have some like weird pictures in it. And I felt really awkward sitting on the airplane like I hope the person next to me can't see these pictures. It looks so weird. But this was another one that had a really big twist that I was not expecting. A few years back, I was running out of money. So I volunteered for a research study at the University of Pennsylvania. The next one is A Discovery of Witches by Deborah Harkness. This one's like a supernatural romance book. Kind of felt like for the Twilight fans, but maybe like a little more mature. Also a show that's pretty good, but I would recommend reading the book. It is a series. I need to get the next one. I still haven't done that. I'm so bad with that. I should just get them all at once, read them in one go, but. The leather bound volume was nothing remarkable. That's such like an innocent sentence, but like if you've read the book, you know, you know what it's talking about. And my last favorite read for 2023 was The Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes by Suzanne Collins. It was not my first time reading it. I had only read it I, once before when it came out and it definitely could be a nostalgia thing and that's why I liked it as much as I did but I, I just feel like you have to read it especially if you read The Hunger Games or were a fan of The Hunger Games you cannot miss out on this book. Coralinus released the fistful of cabbage into the pot of boiling water and swore that one day it would never pass his lips again. Okay guys those were probably my like top top reads of 2023. I hope I didn't miss anything that I super loved but I would highly recommend you reading any of these books. I would also love to know like what your favorite reads of 2023 were and if I haven't read them I could just add them on to my ever-growing TBR <laughs> list. But anyway, as, as always, you could follow me on Instagram to see what I am currently reading as well as if there are any changes to my upload schedule. Also, I would really appreciate if you liked this video and subscribed to this channel. It's super easy. And then we can discuss all the book things because that's all I really want to do is just talk about books with you guys. And I hope to see you next Wednesday. Bye.